My brother Mikey Powell died in police custody in September 2003. It's been a long struggle for justice since then, and many thousands of other families are still struggling to find out why and how their loved one died in police, prison or secure hospital units. Apart from the justice campaigns, the families are often left to deal with the devastating aftermath of the incident that can have a serious impact on the well-being, especially the children of those that have died. Can you help to launch a new national family support fund to assist families affected by deaths and abuses in state custody? The Mikey Powell Memorial Family Fund is an initiative led by the news and campaigning group For Whatever UK, working in cooperation with the Friends of Mikey Powell campaign, the United Friends and Family campaign and Migrant Media. The needs of affected families and children often get lost in the equally important work of campaigning and lobbying of the state's institutions. We want to change that with a permanent fund set up specifically for their needs. This fund will make a real difference for families and their campaign groups that need financial support during the often long and drawn out struggles for justice lasting for decades in many cases. Can you help? Make a pledge today and tell a friend. Uh, my name is Pauline Campbell and I'm from Cheshire. I'm the mother of 18 year old Sarah Campbell who died in the so-called care of Style Prison in 2003 cause of my daughter's death was antidepressant prescription drug poisoning. The Home Office uh, recorded her death as self-inflicted, but the inquest jury two years ago um, did not return a suicide verdict and said a failure in the duty of care contributed to her death. Uh, no one at the prison has been held to account or held responsible for my daughter's death. And in the 24 hours in the care of Style Prison, Sarah was vomiting, fitting, suffered several cardiac arrests and was bleeding from the nose and mouth when she died. Since my daughter's death four years ago, there have been a further 39 dead women prisoners in our jails in England, uh, women who have killed themselves in absolute despair. Three years ago, I decided to engage in direct action and I now hold prison death demonstrations outside women's jails whenever a self-inflicted death is reported. But as at today, I have now held 26 demonstrations all over the country, um, and it is a way of publicly protesting about this appalling problem, which has still not been dealt with by our Labour government. I have in total now been arrested 14 times by the British police. I am handcuffed, dragged along the ground, locked in police cells, and put before the courts. Uh, you couldn't make it up really if you tried, could you? Culminating in, for the first time in my life, I stood criminal trial last month in Gloucestershire. My crime was protesting against the death of a mother of five children who died in the so-called care of Eastwood Park Prison on the 5th of January this year. Caroline Powell, incidentally, was on remand when she died, which means she was legally innocent. She hadn't even had the chance to stand trial. The response of the criminal justice system was cruel and vindictive, and they made me stand a criminal trial for protesting against Caroline Powell's death. I'm pleased to say the judge threw the case out of court and I was acquitted. I had been denied legal aid, which in itself is an affront to the principle of access to justice. Peter Thornton, one of London's top QCs, came out to Bristol and represented me free of charge, uh, which was very helpful. I don't see why I should have to stand criminal trial without legal representation. Um, it was a political trial, but it failed spectacularly. But it did get a huge amount of publicity for the cause and there were three television camera teams at my trial on the 26th of September last month. Shame on the establishment for seeking to criminalise and punish me when I am a grieving mother whose only child has died at the hands of the state.
Pauline Campbell was found dead on 15th May 2008, having taken her own life, not far from the grave of her daughter Sarah. Pauline Campbell's powerful yet tragic story is a very typical example of both the strength and anguish of families faced with resistance, endless hurdles and a distinct lack of empathy by the state and its institutions following deaths in police, penal, mental health or immigration custody. In the years prior to her death, Pauline was committed not just to campaigning, but also to helping work in supporting bereaved families through organisations such as the United Families and Friends Campaign, Inquest and the Howard League for Penal Reform, to mention just a few. She was one of many bereaved parents and families who turned their own personal loss and pain into sustained lobbying and protest against injustice and state neglect. My brother Sean Rigg died in police custody in August 2008. The impact on our family has been devastating and there are many thousands like us who need your support. It's time to step forward to keep up the work that Pauline and many other families have taken. With your support, we can move closer to justice. Can you help? Make a pledge today and tell a friend.